Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue with the definition of groups. Okay. In the last lecture, we saw that if we take uh, one Rubik's cube and then look at all possible moves that we can perform on the Rubik's cube, okay, that is it with some identification. Okay. So, that is it, we, on that set we can actually define some binary operation and we saw that uh, those that binary operation actually satisfies uh, uh, some properties. Okay. For example, closure property, uh, existence of identity, associativity and uh, existence of inverse all those properties were satisfied. So, that is what uh, we saw. So, in this lecture we will continue to look at uh, other practical examples and then uh, try to formulate formalize the definition of groups. So, let us look at uh, this ice crystal flake. Okay. So, you, talk, you, you can see that it possesses lots of symmetries. Okay. So, what we want to do? Uh, we want to actually look at all possible moves that we can perform on this uh, ice crystal flake and then uh, those moves that actually still preserves uh, this uh, symmetry of this ice flake. So, what I mean by that? So, that moves that we are performing that actually leaves the shape of this ice crystal as it is. So, it does not actually change. So, basically uh, it leaves this ice crystal flake invariant. Okay. So, what are all the possible moves that we can perform on this ice crystal flake? Let us see. So, one possible move for example, what we can do? We can actually rotate 60 degree in the anticlockwise direction and still get the same shape of the ice crystal flake. So, that is not difficult to see. So, similar to that what we can do? We can also rotate clockwise 60 degree again we will be actually getting same shape of the ice flake. So, the shape does not change. For example, if you rotate 180 degree sorry 120 degree uh, then again you can see that. Uh, so, it does not matter whether you do it clockwise or anticlockwise again the shape does not change. But here there is one more interesting uh, symmetry. For example, I can take a line that passes through like this. Okay. So, here. So, now if I actually reflect with respect to this line again the shape of this ice crystal flag, flag actually does not change. So, I will leave it to you to think about because it is a it is an easy exercise. So, if you perform actually all possible moves, okay, if you if you just uh, uh, think about what are all the possible moves that we can perform on the ice flake that preserves the shape of the ice crystal flake, then you can see that. So, these 12 possibilities are there. Okay. So, the very first one rotating 0 degree that means doing nothing. So, similar move that we saw even in the uh, Rubik's cube okay. and then you can rotate 60 degree, you can rotate 180 degree and then you can rotate 180 degree and then you can also reverse those process okay, 120 degree and then minus 60 degree. So, note that rotating clockwise 180 degree and then anticlockwise 180 degree they result the same move. So, that is why we actually identify them. So, now like I said, so we can also reflect with respect to some lines. So, these are all the possible reflections that you can actually see. So, totally you have this 12 possible moves that leaves uh, this ice crystal flake invariant. So, that means these are all the possible symmetries that uh, we can get. But here uh, what we are ultimately interested in, we are interested in, in a group that is actually uh, acting on this thing. Uh, but the thing is here I am just talking about how to rotate, how to reflect and so on. So, then what is the group? Okay. So, indeed mathematically speaking here I am talking about the group action. Okay. So, here uh, how the group there is a group behind uh, this picture. So, it is actually if you know what is dihedral group it is a dihedral group uh, D 6 okay, which has order 12. 
So, that group is actually acting on uh, this ice crystal uh, that is that I we actually shown before. So, what is the group and what is the action? So, those are two things that we need to understand. Okay. So, just to explain this analogy, okay. So, before actually getting into the group definition that is the abstraction. So, let us understand what is the abstraction means. Okay. So, if we understand this mathematical formulation, okay, then we will be able to understand understand what what is the group behind this picture. Okay. So, let us consider one uh, particular example. Okay. So, let us take uh, the natural number 4. So, what comes to our mind? Okay. Are we thinking of 4 as 4 objects always? So, for example, if you are in actually uh, in the primary school, okay, let us assume you are in first standard or second standard. So, second standard kid understands 4 as having 4 objects in hand. Okay, that is the first uh, thing comes to the kid mind okay, when you tell what is 4. But we are more matured, so we actually our mathematical understanding is much more than second standard kid. So, that means what? So, we do not really think about 4 objects. When we, whenever we say 4, we always mean the natural number 4. So, that means mostly we remember 4 as a natural number satisfying some properties like 4 plus 3 is 7 and 4 plus 2 is 6 and so on. Okay. So, this is the abstraction that we are talking about. So, for example, if we go back to our picture that we had. So, this 60 degree rotation. Okay. So, when I talk about this 60 degree rotation, so this is that uh, particular move that I am actually performing it on this ice flake. Okay. So, so that means, so what I should consider as group element whether should I consider as this 60 degree rotation or the 60 degree rotation that I am performing on this ice flake. So, that is the question that we are actually interested in. So, if you think about it, so what is the abstraction here? The abstraction here is this 60 degree rotation, it is nothing to do with this particular ice flake. For example, you can take any 2D object, you will be able to actually perform this 60 degree rotation. Okay, there is no issue. So, only thing is needed you need to have a fixed point. For example, the middle point in this picture. So, you are rotating with respect to this point that is all matters. Okay, this is that center point. So, this center point you take and then you rotate 60 degree clockwise or anticlockwise. Okay. So, given any 2 d object you can actually if you fix a point and you will be able to rotate. So, this is the abstraction that we should start appreciating. So, <coughs> when we say anti clockwise 60 degree rotation that we performed on ice crystal flat. So, is this anti clockwise 60 degree rotation all about only that particular ice crystal flag? So, as I explained the answer is no. So, we can perform this anti clock by 60 degree rotation on any 2D object. Okay. So, that means, so all matters is okay, instead of looking at uh, these ice flags. So, what we actually consider? We consider all the possible moves that we are performing on this ice flags. Okay. So, on the ice crystal. So, what we can do? We can start labeling them. Okay, you start giving them some names. Okay, and then you try to see. So, as we did it in the Rubik's cube, instead of studying one particular move, all we do is we take all possible moves. We study them at once. Okay. So, as I said before, that is all about group theory. So, here also what we do instead of studying one particular move that preserves this size crystal shape, we take all possible moves that actually preserves ice crystal shape. So, then it is not that hard to see it will also satisfy the properties that we had for that set of moves that we performed on Rubik's cube. For example, closure property, associativity, existence of identity 
and the inverse. For example, identity will be that uh, move that we do nothing. So, that is that uh, rotating 0 degree. Okay. For example, if you if you if you perform a move that is actually let us say anti-clockwise 60 degree, then the inverse will be clockwise 60 degree. Similarly, for this the inverse will be clockwise 120 degree. So, for this reflections you can see that the same reflection will be the inverse. So, it is not hard to actually list down all the inverses for each element and closure is also somewhat easier to actually think about. So, once you understand this abstraction that we are talking about only the possible moves that actually leaves this ice crystal flag invariant. So, then you take first you take two moves call it m 1 m 2 you first apply m 2 and then apply m 1. So, then you can see that m 2 leaves it invariant and m 1 leaves it invariant. So, so, you consecutively if you apply then again that also will leave that invariant. So, that m 1 m 2 is also will be again a move that that leaves this ice crystal flake invariant. Okay. So, but what is the most difficult part here actually convincing you yourself that uh, these are all the only possible moves that we can perform on this particular ice crystal flake. Okay. So, we will come to this later when I introduce what is called dihedral group. Okay. So, sometime it is denoted by d n, but the order of the group is uh, twice n. So, that is why I prefer to denote it by d 2 n, but anyway it will be very clear what we mean by uh, the dihedral group, what is that n stands for. Okay. So, then it will be upper, it will be very clear why I want to call it uh, d 2 n instead of d n. But anyway, so when we introduce this uh, dihedral group, so we will actually uh, explain everything that uh, why we get exactly all these possible moves and one at least one part is clear. These moves leaves this uh, particular ice crystal flake invariant that is easy to see and then for example, you take it as exercise try to do possible uh, like uh, composition of moves okay, applying first to move and then second move and then see whether you are going to get anything new. You, you may actually, so what I am claiming, I am claiming that you will not get anything new. For example, if you apply this uh, anti clock phase 60 degree rotation and then if you apply this reflection. So, you, are, you will be getting a move that will be one of these things. So, I will leave it to you to think about it what it will be. Okay. So, so that way at least one thing that you will be able to verify for time being. So, you take all this 12 possible moves that we are performing on this ice crystal flake shape. Okay. So, that is here. So, what I want you to verify for example, the closure property. If you take any two of these, comp you compose them. Okay, that means you apply, for example, what is M1 composed M2? You apply M2 first and then M1 later. Then you are getting a new move. So that new move, what I'm saying, it will be one of these twelve only. You don't get anything new. Okay, and already I pointed out inverse will be what? Okay, associativity. So, once you understand this as maps, okay, that is in some properties, then associative will be somewhat trivial. Okay. We will do that later when I introduce uh, dihedral groups. Okay. So, we will also study properties of dihedral group in that lectures. Okay. So, now I believe all of you must have got some idea about uh, where the groups are coming from. So, like I said, so, groups do not arise alone, they always arise with action. Okay. Groups are groups without action does not make any sense at least for me. Okay. For example, here we talked about this uh, dihedral group D6, okay. it is naturally acting on this particular ice crystal flake, but it is one example where it is acting. You can actually change 
the shape of this also. For example, you can talk about 6 gon. Okay. So, if you take uh, 6 gon then D6 will act on that 6 gon. So, that is something uh, we will be seeing. Okay. So, there will be more objects on which given one group can act, but we need to understand abstractly what is that one group, okay, that group definition. So, that is where we are converging. So, from the examples that we have seen so far, so one is the set of all moves on Rubik's cube that we can perform and here again set of all moves uh, that we can perform on this uh, ice crystal flake. So, that suggests that, so all we do is you can start with a non-empty set and then you define what is called binary operation on that. So, that means given two elements from that set you want to uniquely associate another element from that set okay, and that association must be unique. Okay. So, that means, so we can, so most of the things that we actually talk inside mathematics or define in mathematics that can be defined using what is called sets and functions. So, we have to use the language of sets and function to define anything. So, if you use the language of sets and functions, so then what we have, we have a set which is non-empty set and a binary operation which is a function from G cross G to G. That means, given two elements, you can call it order tuple A, B then you are associating one element with that A, B. So, the order matters a lot because when I say I actually take uh, element that is associated with uh, given two elements A, B, let us say the order is given to be tuple A comma B. So, the corresponding element I take it to be A, B. Okay it is just a notation. So, like we did it for the moves. Na? So, when we talked about the moves that we performed on the Rubik's cube, I said when you take m1, m2. So, that means you apply m1 first and then apply m2. But it is not hard to see applying m1 first and m2 first does not amount to be same as applying m2 first and then m1 first. Okay. So, in the language of group it is called commutativity. So, not all groups are commutative. So, let me start writing a bit. Okay. So, here uh, we are ready to actually define a group. So, we need a set. So, that is the first thing you start with the non empty set. And given two elements we need another element that is uniquely associated with group G. So, that means you have a operation okay, binary operation from G cross G to G. So, that is just a function. So, most of the time this function will be denoted by just dot okay, because the operation is just one operation. It is custom to just write it as either star or dot or without anything. Okay. So, let us use the customary notation that is star. So, given a b, so I am going to associate some element inside g. So, because we do not know what is that element, we just denote it by a star b that is all. So, recall if we take the set of all moves, set of all moves that we can perform on a Rubik's cube. Okay. So, that set you can take it to be G. G. Okay. Let me call it uh, G C because that C is the Rubik's cube. So, then what we did given m 1 
m2 from this g of c. Of course, so there is this identification modulo the identification that we just write it as yeah. So, move with some identification. So, given m1 m2 what we did we said what is m1 star m2 which we denoted by m1 m2 what we said. So, first we apply m1 and then we apply m2 ok. But it is not that hard to see. So, first applying m1 and then applying m2 is not same as first applying m2 and then applying m1. So, you can easily find some moves m1 m2. So, for which m1 m2 is not same as m2 m1 ok that I will leave it as exercise you just find those two moves on the Rubik's cube. So, now so that means the order in which I, I associate this element that matters a lot. So, that is why I take this ordered tuple a comma b and then send it to a star b ok. In general a star b is not same as b star a. So, what are all the things that actually this g and star satisfies ok. So, the closure property, closure property is encoded here star being a function. So, given a comma b you have this a star b which is an element of capital G. So, that means already it is closed under this binary operation. So, the second condition which is indeed the first condition is the associativity. So, what is the associativity? So, if I start with 3 elements a, b, c inside g then there are 2 ways to perform uh, this a star b star c ok that is what we saw in, in even for the Rubik's cube ok. So, first we can do a star b and then take star with c ok. But what is associativity says this is same as you first take b star c and then mul and then uh, take a star b star c. So, these two things are true for any a b c. So, the second condition is actually the existence of identity. So, what it says? So, there exists an element E in G. So, it is customary to actually denote this identity as E. So, later we will prove that. So, this existence of identity already implies that uh, the identity is actually unique. So, there exists identity E in G such that when you perform A star E and then E star A, then that should be A for all A in G. So, that means this identity does nothing when you compose with A and there is this existence of inverse. So, what it does? So, there exist given A in G, there exist B in G such that A star B is same as B star A which is same as identity. So, it is like the reverse move ok that we actually had in the in the Rubik's cube ok. So, that is something. So, abstractly speaking it is just a non empty set with the binary operation. So, given two elements you should be able to associate another element in the G in a unique way and it satisfies the following property associativity existence of identity and existence of inverse. If G star satisfies these properties 1, 2, 3 ok. So, that is called group G star satisfying 1, 2, 3 is called a group 
okay. So, that is what group means. So, we saw two examples so far, okay, all possible moves that we can perform on the Rubik's cube with respect to the composition of moves form a group and all possible moves or all the possible symmetries that are there on the ice crystal flag that we saw. So, that also form a group. So, these examples again can be generalized. Okay. So, there are various symmetries actually that we can actually talk about. Okay. So, we can change the shape. For example, we can take triangle and then we can talk about all possible symmetries of this. Okay. So, even before triangle what we can do we can actually start with the line segment. Okay. You just take a line segment. So, line segment let us say inside your R2 or you can also talk about symmetries of these letters. So, this is something you must have seen. Okay. So, what are all the symmetries are possible for, for given alphabets. But anyway, so we will make all these things very precise okay, and then we will see more and more examples coming from number theory, geometry as well as combinatorics. Okay. So, we are running out of time now. So, I will stop here. So, we will continue with uh, some more examples of groups coming from number theory in the next class. Thank you.